In this video, we'll cover a general introduction of our AKCC55 case controller. The Dan Foss AKCC55 case controller is part of our uh, controls portfolio for a uh, Dan Foss supermarket control system. Uh, as you can see in the slide here, the case controllers, which are shown bottom middle of this slide, uh, the, the different variations we'll get into in a minute here of compact single coil and multi coil. These case controllers would feed in through a, a network signal, uh, hardwired into something like our Danfoss uh, AKSM 800A system manager to report in information, allow for set point changes, history logging, et cetera. And this will be part of, again, a, a larger architecture that may also include something like a Danfoss pack controller for a CO2 system. The uh, total portfolio of the case controller side itself, you can see some of the other accessories and, and technology involved. So remote displays also become a part of the case controller uh, installation many times. Uh, the, the current case controllers we offer do have a, a Bluetooth option where we can use mobile phones to connect into the case controllers locally and, and make some changes there as well. And then there's also some factory tools that you can see um, with the Indicators on the left side, uh, CoolProg being a, a PC-based software we offer for whether it's field or factory applications, but being able to, to directly tie into the case controllers for, for some functionality there as well. The portfolio for the, the case controllers themselves, you can see three different categories here uh, across four different part numbers. So our compact version on the left is meant for smaller electronic expansion valve applications with limited numbers of inputs and outputs, or also for a uh, mechanical TXV solution where we would just be controlling a solenoid valve and not looking at superheat through an electronic expansion valve. Uh, so that's where the, the compact version would fit in for, for applications like that. Our single coil, our most popular options are here in the middle column. Two separate part numbers here, one with a display, one without a display. Otherwise, they're exactly the same. Uh, here, we're just looking to control a single evaporator through a single electronic expansion valve only. No options for mechanical here. Um, but so we would be looking at superheat values as well as room and, and case temperatures, potentially, depending on where the case controller is being used to decide how much to open and close our uh, expansion valve that's being controlled by these two models of case controller. Multi-coil is a fourth option here on the right. Uh, here, this would be a, an application where we have a, a case, a common case, but with multiple evaporators in it, and that can be two evaporators if it's a low temp electric defrost case it can be uh three evaporators with three expansion valves if it's a medium temp case just time off defrost based on the number of relays we have available on the unit uh for any of these models you see up here I, one, one good thing to point out is that uh, when we're tying these into a system manager like we showed on the previous slide each one is a separate selection so always good to pay attention to these models just uh, the the options that may have been set up in the system manager for a given case we need to make sure these part numbers are matching the selections we're making in the system manager as well for communication, all the units have Modbus built in, as you can see towards the bottom of the chart. Uh, so no extra accessories or hardware required to, to link something over Modbus to the case controllers. There are some optional accessory cards that could be added in if, if need be for echelon communication, uh, or, or as we get more and more <clears throat> in the future here into IP-based communication, there are, are already uh, accessory cards that available for these single coil and multi-coil options for, for that type of communication as well. Uh, kind of minimums that we need to see on the case controllers because they, they are not just a superheat valve driver, but they are a true case controller that can handle their functions like case lighting, uh, evaporator fans, defrosting, anti-sweat heaters, et cetera. Um, but, but from a, a minimum standpoint on the case controller, what we expect to see would be what we have pictured here on this slide. So to be able to properly uh, calculate and see what the superheat is at the outlet of the evaporator, we would require a pressure transducer on the suction line and also a temperature sensor on the suction line. That would allow us to calculate that superheat. 
The abbreviations you see here, S2, S4, we'll touch on those in a, a few slides. Those are just abbreviations we used as Danfoss to, to identify position or location of a sensor. Um, but yeah, two sensors we would need for superheat are the pressure transducer and temp sensor on the suction line. Because these are, again, case controllers, we expect that we're also looking at what uh, the temperature is in either a room or in a case so that we're only cooling the space when, when it gets warm enough to, to do that. So we would also expect one additional temp sensor to be in place. It can be discharged, as we show here. It could also be in the return airstream. But we would expect to see a, a second temp sensor in, in one of those locations so that we're monitoring, again, the room or case that we, we have the case controller applied to. On the output side, again, at a minimum, we would expect to see an electronic expansion valve for, for most of our models, unless it's that mechanical TXV solution, in which case it would be a solenoid. Um, but yeah, at least one output where we'd expect to see wiring coming out of the case controller to go to a valve. The valve type that we use, uh, by default, the, the standard option would be a pulsing style uh, electronic expansion valve, so not a stepper style valve where we're driving a stepper signal and pushing a valve to a specific opening degree, but a pulsing valve where we have a solid state relay on the case controller and at high rates we're opening fully and closing fully in the valve to give us the proper superheat that we want coming out of the evaporator. For Danfoss, the AKVP you see there on the first bullet point would be the model or series of electronic expansion valve that, that we typically offer and, and use with these case controllers. Uh, alternatively, on the single coil option, if we had an application where we wanted to look at a stepper valve, uh, there is the uh, ability to take a 0 to 10 volt signal out of the case controller, out of the CC55. And that, that 0 to 10 signal will represent valve opening degree that we would want. And that can then be wired into something like a valve driver, uh, which can be used as the, the driving signal behind opening and closing a uh, stepper valve. Uh, again, if we wanted to apply that style of valve as opposed to something like a, an AKVP. On the transducer side, the transducers wired to the case controller, they have to be a ratiometric style. Uh, ratiometric just means that whatever supply signal we feed to the circuit of the transducer, our range on our signal to indicate what pressure we're at at any point in time will be a ratio or a fraction of that supply. So for most of our transducers, we're feeding them a 5 volt signal. And at the minimum end of the range, depending on which specific transducer we're using, 10% uh, would be the return signal to, to indicate the low end of that range, and 90% would be the high end of that range. So if we have a transducer that reads between 0 and 100 PSI, when the system's at 0 PSI, 10% of a 5-volt signal would mean we're seeing uh, half a volt if we were to meet, uh, read with a meter. And then on the opposite end of that, when we're at the maximum range, the transducer can read 100 PSI. Uh, again, in, in an example here, 90% of that 5 volts when we're there would be 4.5 volts. So it gives us a linear scale where we can check and see at any point in time what pressure reading we're seeing on the system and if the voltage we see uh, matches up with that or not. Specific model types that we have for Danfoss case controllers. If it's an HFC system, uh, today the AKS32R is our current option. It reads up to 174 PSI, which for an HFC system uh, covers us for, for a suction line. And then on the CO2 side, we have an AKS2050. Looks identical from the outside. Connections would be the same. Uh, only real difference is the pressure range it reads over with CO2. We know we have higher pressures, so the, the 2050 offers us the ability to read up to 100, uh, 855 PSI, which again covers us for uh, any range we should expect to see on the suction line of a CO2 system. Sensor locations, so just getting back into the uh, the abbreviations that I had alluded to a few slides ago. Uh, the PE would be our suction transducer, uh, which again we use for superheat control. S2, the sensor you see just next to that, would be our evaporator outlet sensor or coil outlet sensor. It's used in conjunction with the transducer to calculate our superheat value. 
S3 and S4 are our return and discharge air. Um, we both aren't required. We, we only require one of the two, again, to properly control temperature in the room or, or in the case that the valve and case controller are being used on. We can have both as an option if, if someone would like, where we take a, a fraction of each. So we could just average out the two sensors for the room control. Um, but at a minimum, just, just one of these two is required. For electric or hot gas defrost systems, we have a, a, the term would be S5 for our defrost termination sensor, which we would expect to see strapped right to the evaporator itself for proper monitoring of evaporator temp for defrost termination. And then we also offer a, a position on a case controller for a product temperature sensor, um, which we show off in space here to the left side, but that would be designated as S6 in our uh, case controller layout. Each one of these ac uh, acronyms or abbreviations that you see here would be the same that you see on the case controller sticker or label itself when you're going to wire inputs and, and sensors to the case controller. Uh, we have documentation that you can keep on hand to, to, easily, uh, to easily translate what these acronyms mean as well until you get more up to speed on them. Lastly, with the uh, the accessories that we have on the case controllers on the display side, three different uh, styles of display that can be used. Uh, we have the, under this AKUI 55, we have a we call a set display. It just has a series of buttons on it that a user right there locally at the display can use to navigate through the case controller and make changes to parameters and check values. We have an info display that can be used. This would be for someone that just wants to display temperature but not allow for any local changes through a display at the case controller itself. And then we do have with the CC55 series a Bluetooth display. So it, it displays a, a value like temperature of the case on there. Um, but it also has a button that you can see off to the right side of the display that would allow uh, activate or allow for someone to to take our uh, AKCC55 Connect app, and with that app, a user is able to connect into the case controller via the display. They can get in and and do very similar things that they'd be able to do from the system manager or from the set display option at the top, where they can check values, make parameter changes. Uh, the, one of the nice things about the Bluetooth app is you can also get in and save or back the case controller settings up to your phone and if you wanted to turn around and load that same setup into another case controller uh, you can do that you can store these as files these backups as files on your phone to use at a, a later point in time so hopefully this helps and gives you a good overview of uh, at least an introduction to, to what our cc55 case controller series uh, looks like and some of the basic offerings it has uh, so yeah thank you for the time